Hello everyone. We're going to do another application of stoichiometry. It's something called combustion analysis and it's clever. I want to show you a picture of the apparatus for combustion analysis. Um, here it is. We have an unknown hydrocarbon. So we know that there's carbon and hydrogen, but we don't know the chemical formula, the empirical or the molecular formula. So here's our trick. Here's uh, the method to determine um, the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. You take the sample right here and you burn it. You're going to burn it in a furnace. Uh, this copper two oxide just helps convert all of the carbon to CO2 and all the hydrogen to water. Now here's the clever part. As uh, this combustion reaction happens, the water and CO2 will pass through traps. This first trap is the perchlorate, is what will trap and absorb, it's really an absorbent, is going to trap the water, absorb that water in essence. Um, and then a sodium hydroxide, um, I believe it's a really fine powder, um, is going to trap the CO2. And so what scientists do is they know the mass of each of those absorbents and after the reaction is complete, they take the mass again and the increased mass is the H2O and the CO2. So to give you a visual of what's happening, there you have the combustion analysis for the experiment. Okay, stoichiometry, how does this work? <clears throat> Let's go to uh, our beginning information. We would have some unknown hydrocarbon and we'll know the amount. So we know that we have uh, 5.23 grams of, notice how I wrote this, I did the subscripts of C sub X H sub Y. I know it's a hydrocarbon, there's carbon and hydrogen, but I don't know how much of each. Now check this out. Follow the carbon. All of this carbon ends in one spot, right there, carbon dioxide. So I can't create mass, I can't destroy mass. All of the matter, all the atoms that I have of that carbon have to end right there. Mm, significant. Same thing with the hydrogen. All of the hydrogen that I have right there, every single atom has to end right there in the water. So we can figure out the masses um, and the moles, of course, because of molar mass conversions, um, of the carbon and the hydrogen if we know the mass of the CO2 and the H2O. Now, um, I want to remind you that those two masses they came from that trap where the CO2 was absorbed and the scientists just did the math. They took the initial mass of the absorbent final mass and it had increased by 1.621 grams. So they knew that's how much uh, CO2 was trapped. We are going to determine the amount of carbon and hydrogen. And here's the really cool thing. If we know the amount of carbon and hydrogen, bring your brain, pull up the spiral in your head, we're going to go back to empirical formula. Remember, these are just molar ratios. So if I can find the moles of carbon and hydrogen, then we can find the empirical formula. Okay, a lot of words. Let me show you how we're going to do this. Let's start with the carbon. So begin with what I'm given. We have 1.612 grams of carbon dioxide, but I want to know how much carbon there is. So uh, we're going to go from grams to moles. Uh, oxygen is a molar mass of 16, carbon is a molar mass of 12, and so that is going to give us 28, oh, so sorry you guys, forgot the two. It's not carbon monoxide, it's carbon dioxide. <laughs> two times 16 is 32, plus 12, we're going to get 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide um, is in one mole of carbon dioxide. Okay, great, there's a carbon dioxide, but I want carbon. This is that higher level, um, like an AP first year college level. I can look at just the carbon dioxide and do a ratio within that compound. One mole of carbon dioxide contains, watch this, one mole of carbon. Uh, for every one carbon dioxide, there's one carbon. Now watch the units grams of CO2 cancels, mole of CO2 cancels, and beautiful, look what we have, <gasps> moles of carbon, moles of carbon. Let's see, our amount on that is 0 
Let me double check that I wrote that down correctly. Perfect. Okay, so that's how many moles of carbon were in the CO2. Now here's the cool thing. If I ended with 0 0.03663 <clears throat> moles of carbon, that means I began with 0 0.03663 moles of carbon. Brilliant. Now let's do the hydrogen. So we had 0 0.7425 grams of water and I want the amount, the moles of hydrogen. So let's go from grams to moles. The molar mass of water, 18.02 grams of water. One oxygen is 16, one hydrogen is 1.01. .01. Multiply that by two, add the 16, 18.02. One mole of hydrogen, that's the mass. Now, we wanna get rid of water and, and end with just the hydrogen. So one mole of water contains how many moles of hydrogen? Two, two moles of hydrogen. For every one water molecule, there's two hydrogens. For one mole of water, there's two moles of hydrogen. Look at our units together. We cancel the grams of the water, the moles of the water, and we will end with moles of hydrogen. So 0.7425 divided by 18.02 times two, and we get 0 0.08. Two, four, three. Let me double check that one more time. 0 0.08243. Great. So we found the molar ratio. We have, I could write it here for fun, carbon 0 0.03663 for every hydrogen 0 0.08243. There's the molar ratio, but it's ugly. They're not small whole numbers. This is where we go to the empirical formula. Uh, we found the molar ratio, but we want small whole numbers. You remember the trick. You divide by the smallest mole. So I'm going to divide by the smallest mole, and this will give us the whole numbers. 0 0.03663. When you divide that, we are going to get 1 for the carbon, and this comes out 2.25. Oh, I am still not at a small whole number. We've got to bring this to a whole number. Um, and the way we do that, this is a ratio. I'm going to multiply it by a factor. And remember, because it's a ratio, whatever I multiply this by, I also have to multiply the carbon. Um, this, to get it to a whole number, I have to multiply by four. Multiply this by four. And how I did that in my head, I was thinking, what do I have to multiply 0.25 by to get a whole number? The answer is four. So we're going to get a four. 4 times 2.25 is going to give us 9. And there we have it, our molar ratio. So that means the formula is C4H9. And remember, that is the empirical formula. I think it's so neat, pretty cool, that we're able to find the chemical formula by burning an unknown hydrocarbon and collecting this CO2 and the H2O. Now, how you'd be asked this on a problem? Um, it would say that you have an unknown um, hydrocarbon. It will give the mass of that hydrocarbon um, and it produces masses of CO2, H2O, and they will typically ask for both the empirical formula and the molecular formula, formula and they will give you the molar mass for the compound. Um, now this molar mass right here, they said was 114. So we found empirical formula. Now let's do molecular formula. So you'll recall molecular formula, we're going to take the molecular weight divided by the formula weight. And the formula weight is just the molar mass of the empirical formula. So here I have it, the C4H9. I'll do this in a different color so it's a little bit easier to see. Let's find the molar mass of this. So I've got four carbons, and that's going to be 12.01, and we've got nine hydrogens, oops, nine hydrogens, and that's 1.01. .01. This will give us um, 48.04, 9.09, so that's going to be 57.13. 57.13 is the formula weight. So if I come back here, do molecular weight divided by formula weight. The molecular weight 
is about 114, and the formula weight was the 57.13. That is really close to a two. That means in nature, this compound um, has twice, twice the amount of atoms as what we see right here. It has two times that formula weight. So you just take the subscripts and multiply those by two. This will be C8H18. Oh, cool. I didn't realize when I did this problem, um, this is octane. This is what you and I put in our gas tanks. So this is the molecular formula. Molecular formula. Final answer. Final answer right there. So really quick review. You are given an unknown hydrocarbon. You have the masses of the CO2 and the H2O. You know combustion is always the hydrocarbon plus oxygen produces CO2 and H2O. You're thinking empirical formula is a molar ratio. So you have to simply find the moles of the carbon and the moles of the hydrogen because all that carbon came from the hydrocarbon. All the hydrogen came from that hydrocarbon. Set up your stoichiometry, find moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, then you just clean it up. Divide by the smallest mole to get your whole, uh, smallest whole number. If you need to multiply by a factor to bring it to a whole number, great. Um, that will give you the empirical formula. They'll always give you the molar mass of the molecular weight of the molecular formula. There it is. Simply take that that they give you and divide it by the molar mass of your empirical formula. That will give you the molecular formula. Very doable. You can think your way through it. The key, the crux on this is remembering those are molar ratios. So you've got to find the moles of the carbon and the hydrogen. Pretty cool. Take a second, look at that. You're going to do this. Feel smart. I'm so proud of you. Good work.